Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna crack open my laptop and we're gonna start looking at some code on the terminal and we're gonna start walking our way through that pre-existing code. I'm gonna talk about what each line is doing and then we're gonna execute that code and we're gonna see an all-in-one example of Packer just going from start to finish. Okay, so I'm now in my Linux terminal here and what I've done is inside of my working directory, I've placed some files for Packer for doing various things. You can see there's a basics file, there's a basics enhanced post processor, so on and so forth. You don't need all of these files to run Packer. These are all examples that we're going to run through throughout the throughout the, throughout this journey that we're going on with understanding the basics of Packer. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this this basic.json file here. So we're going to delve into that. We're going to look at it line by line. We're going to come to an understanding of what's happening on a, on a line by line basis. And then we're going to execute that file against my AWS account. And what we'll see is a very simple, very basic Amazon machine image being created for us by Packer. Okay, so what we've got here is the basic.json file. So this is a Packer template. It's a, it's a JSON file. That's how Packer templates are currently being written. In a future version, we're going to see Packer templates being written in HashiCorp configuration language or HCL. If you've ever used Terraform, you're familiar with HCL. That's what you write your Terraform state files in. HCL2 is the language they're going to be using. So Packer is, is due to support HCL very, very soon. Right now, we're stuck with JSON, but it's good enough. So we have a very, very basic file here. So the first thing we're doing here on line one is we're just opening up a JSON document. So we're using a couple of curly braces to open up a JSON document. Then we're defining a key at the top level here on line two, and that key is builders. Now a builder in Packer tells Packer what it, what it is to build. So in this case, it's gonna be an Amazon AMI based on an EBS volume. So we're, built, we're setting a key called builders, and the value of that key is going to be, as we can see here at the end, is, is it going to be a list? Open up a square bracket. We've got the closing square bracket, nine, nine lines down there on the left, you can see. So that's our list. And then inside of that list, we're defining another JSON document, which is going to contain, or a JSON object, or a dictionary, I should say. It's going to contain our builder. What this implies is because this is a list, this implies that you can have multiple builders and you actually can have multiple builders. In fact, Packer can actually build multiple images at the same time in parallel. As with most things in these kind of tools, you then provide flags to tell the tool how to behave. And in this case, Packer is no different. So we've got our list of builders. We've just got the one builder and we're building a type. We've got a key here at the beginning and that key is type, and then it's Amazon, Amazon EBS is the type, Amazon dash EBS is the type. So that tells Packer what type of builder we wanna use and therefore what type of image we wanna produce. A little bit further down here, we've got the region now. This is clearly the AWS region that we wanna build the image inside of. And in this case, we've got AP Southeast 2, which is Sydney. Australia. A little bit further down. Now this is more this is a very interesting flag. This is the source AMI flag. And as you can see here, we're providing it with an AMI ID. So when you're building an AMI with Packer, you need you need first, you need an initial AMI from which to build. It's like the kind of the very it's like the chicken and the egg. What comes first? Well in this case, Amazon has provided you with the egg and it's these pre built fully managed AMI images. This, in this case, this is a Ubuntu 1804, 64-bit. And we're gonna build on top of that AMI with our own AMI. So we're gonna build an AMI from an existing AMI by building on top of it, updating it, installing additional software, and so on and so forth. So this flag is very important. Then we've got the instance type. In this case, it's a T2 micro. So this is obviously the size of the EC2 instance that we want Packer to create, because that's ex that's actually what it does. With a default Amazon EBS builder type, what it actually does is it spins up an EC2 instance based on our AMI, 
runs any provision against it so that we update it, install software, secure it, and so on and so forth. And then it takes a snapshot of that EC2 instance to produce an AMI, and then it terminates the instance. And so what we're saying to Packer here is when you do create that EC2 compute resource, the type I want you to create is a T2 micro. So a very, very cheap, very small, slow, cheap VM. But that's fine for our purposes. We don't need a high-end system to produce an AMI. You don't ever need a high-end system if you're finding your Packer build process is very, very slow. Because you might be doing very computationally or disk or network heavy things during the provisioning process. If you are, you might need to boost up the instance hype to something much more powerful because the bigger the instance, the more network throughput you get, for example. Now, a piece of information that doesn't get provided to us by the AMI ID is how you access that AMI or access the system that is created from that AMI. So Packer is gonna be working in this case with Ubuntu 18, which is obviously a Linux distribution. And so in order to access it, you go over SSH. And so with this flag here, SSH underscore username, we're just telling Packer, you're gonna SSH into the box using the Ubuntu username. If we didn't provide this, it would have no way of knowing what user to access on the remote system. It could be root, could be EC2, could be Ubuntu, could be Superman, it could be anything. So this flag tells Packer, you're going to be logging in via the Ubuntu username. And finally, in this very basic example, we're then telling Packer, we want to create an AMI with the following name, Ubuntu-18-base. This name can be more complicated. You can actually embed code into this, into this string here so that you can pull out dates and times. So you can timestamp your AMIs at the, at the moment they were created. That's very powerful. We'll take a look at that in another video. But for now, we're just going to go with this very simple static string. And we'll see what happens if you try and recreate the image when one with the same name already, already exists. So this is our very, very basic Packer template here. We've got a document with a key called Builders that contains a list, contains a list of more documents. We've set the flags on that builder. Then we've closed it with this final curly brace. We've ended our list here with the square brace. And then we've ended our document here with this curly brace. So now let's jump back into the terminal and let's execute this and see what happens.